Top men in town this weekend, Dennis Law, and with him, George Best, on the big match. And welcome again to you, to the big match. And today for our main match, we have what I think is one of the most entertaining games of the season. It's our top match as we go down to Selhurst Park, Crystal Palace against Manchester United. Tony Taylor with it. And even McCormick's gone up for this one. And Birchinell's there too. McCormick getting ahead to it. Got it on. Oh, it kicked away over his own head. Also, Wolves and Southampton. Oh, and Martin really got himself in a tangle on that one. And how's this for firepower? And just what those uh, big guns were doing at Crystal Palace yesterday, well, we'll show you a little later in the programme. Also today, a treat for all you Scottish exiles as we bring you the goals from that vital Aberdeen Celtic match. The final six of our golden goals. Remember, this is the trophy that awaits the winner. A look at your letters as well, and a real famous fun spot to round it all off for you to enjoy. So we really are packed with good things today as we go to our main match, Crystal Palace against Manchester United. And as you would expect, another huge crowd to greet United. Incidentally, the Greek national team, here to play England at Wembley on Wednesday, were given the choice of watching Arsenal or West Ham. But they said they would like to see this one. Above all, they said, they wanted to watch the one and only George Best. And Best is sure to pose problems for this Crystal Palace side. Picking up form again now, David Payne recovered from injury is at two. Steve Kember is the new skipper. Meanwhile, Manchester United, they are delighted to have Dennis Law back in their side again after injury. Sadler and Fitzpatrick return to the defence. So now we're just about ready to go for this one. The referee today is Dennis Turner of Cannock in Staffordshire. The crowd really enjoying the sunshine. And making his 300th league appearance for, for Manchester United today, our old friend Pat Crerand. But it's going to be Crystal Palace who are going to kick off. But in fact are now beginning to find some of the form that they showed early on in the season. Defending the goal now to our left in those claret shirts with a thin blue stripe united all in white fitzpatrick challenging there with tony taylor and sadler putting it away into touch for a throw then to crystal palace united in fact who come having lost three of their last four games and wall now to take the throw for crystal palace virginal wall again Flicked in there for Tamling, but a shade too high, but Scott was onto it. And Lloyd is who gets it away, as far as Tony Taylor. A little dink forward there, Birchinall looking for it, and uh, Edwards it was, to Law and United so casually as uh, Best gets his first touch. Treated with a mixture of boos and screams and whistles, this incomparable crowd puller. But even incomparable crowd pullers can be shoved off a ball as Birchinall shoved him off then. Tony Taylor, interesting to see him in a more defensive position, a real little fighter. And Wharton must have been offside. Terry Wharton, bought from Bolton, formerly, of course, with the Wolves. Now Gowling, this long, rangy player, with McCormick, another long, rangy player. And the ball, in fact, going behind, but the free kick given to uh, Crystal Palace. A little bit of pushing there by Alan Gowling on McCormick. Of course, Alan Gowling, of course, is in our final six of the Golden Goals and scored a magnificent goal at Chelsea to get into that final six. And now it's Bertinel streaking away, and a goal! Palace go into the lead with only four minutes gone. Supreme opportunism again there by Alan Bertinel. Tremendous acceleration putting him clear of that United defence and giving Stepney no chance as he came out. So it's Stepney with no chance and Birchinall with his uh, 13th goal of the season to put Palace ahead with only four minutes gone. 
Now best. Perrin with the kick to Fitzpatrick. And now best. With a shot across that Palace goal, that wasn't so far off. Snaking little run again by George Best. Jackson with the kick. Virginal with his head. Kemba looking for it, but he had to round the uh, referee as well, and so he went for Bobby Charlton. Kemba. Charlton. Law to Craron. And a dangerous looking cross there as Gowling goes in and Jackson a fraction ahead of him. And now Bobby Tambling to take it away in a fair bit of space which uh, Fitzpatrick is trying to close to Kemba. And there is Fitzpatrick closing it. Pat Craron. Bobby Charlton. Payne, shrugging off Morgan, very nearly shrugging off Tony Dunn as well. Oh, what a slack one there, Charlton thought that he got a teammate behind him and it was Virginal. And that finds Kemba and Taylor herring into a position as well. That's just a little too excited Tony Taylor, but what a tremendous competitor this fellow is. And it's good positioning for him, a good idea to have him in a number six shirt where he can defend and attack because he'll run for you the whole afternoon. Payne, Scott turning it off nicely and Watt just failing to keep it in. Pack Ferrer. Kemba. Perrin doing his utmost to hold him off and he's quite a handful, uh, Steve Kemba. Payne with the throw. And Dunn getting in before Wharton. But now Kemba again, stopped by Morgan. McCormick. And Scott beaten so easily by Perrin. Bobby Charlton to Law. Not the best of passes by Law, and it goes to Tony Taylor. Sadler, oh, losing it to Tambling! And number two, Bobby Tambling! A mistake by Sadler, giving uh, Stepney no chance, and Tambling makes it 2-0. It was Sadler's mistake, and Tambling pounced on it, Stepney got a hand to it, but couldn't hold it. 2-0 to Crystal Palace, and it was Bobby Tamling, in fact, who scored the only goal of the game by which Crystal Palace won a league game up at Old Trafford earlier this season. So Sadler has a lot to repay now. On the left of your picture in the front row, Arthur Waite, the Crystal Palace chairman, who must be well pleased, the Crystal Palace supporter all his life. Gowling nodding it on, and Jackson to gather it once more. Kemba, Tamling, and Claren back to Sadler. Bobby Charlton flicked on nicely for Claren. Best outside him, and we've seen little of best after the opening burst. And stopped there by Wall to the cheers of the Palace supporters, Tamling away. Virginal. Played first time, and Wall right up there, Tamling up there as well. Playing it now for Kemba, but why? Good move there by Crystal Palace. Even George Petty, the coach in the box, was applauding that one. And he really is the most demanding coach. Just there, second from the left, the man who's done so much for this Crystal Palace rise to the first division. No. 
So a push in the back by Wall and a free kick to Manchester United. And it's going to be David Sadler to take it. Bertinol <laughs> standing too close to Sadler's free kick. And the referee saying, well, that was an offence by Bertinol, so come forward ten yards. Dowling leaping for it, but beaten by McCormick. William Morgan turning it back again. Payne get underneath that one straight to George Best. To Charlton, trying a one-two, pushed off that ball on the edge of the area once more by Payne. And I would think that Payne may have been just a fraction lucky there. So it's United's free kick, and it's going to be Charlton and Best standing over this ball, there's the Crystal Palace wall, best number seven. Fitzpatrick's gone on the far side, Gowling's up there too, Law as well, even Edwards up there, Claren coming in, and they've got to be ten yards off this ball. Best flicking it sideways for Sadler to push it through, and my goodness that was good work by Jackson. He really did burst that one through, low and hard. Tambling, and Hogan letting that one slip, and Law, now for Gowling, still Gowling, Law, and a goal, 2-1, Dennis Law. Law and Gowling delighted, and Law telling Gowling that it was his cool-headedness that set up that chance, unmistakably, for Dennis Law to come in there like a whiplash and finish it off. So Manchester United, with three minutes to go to half-time, get back into this game. Through Law. Now Tamley. Morgan, United who for so long in this first half looked to be on the way out and now they're right back in it with Gowling and there's Bobby Charlton, stopped though by Payne, down goes Birchenau put there by Edwards, Birchenau unhappy about it, Best who's had so far one of his wayward games, little flashes, but periods where he doesn't seem to be doing very much. But like United, they're such a dangerous side at all times, but there's Tambling and Kemba trying to get in on it, but the whistle had gone for a kick to Manchester United. Cowling going in hard again. And Jackson... Oh, what's Jackson done now? My goodness, the fullback's part, turning it into touch as he was confronted unexpectedly by Best. Best done. McCormick v Gowling. And McCormick the winner. Payne, Scott, Payne again. And the whistle goes for half-time and a really entertaining first half it's been. Alan Birchenall having put Crystal Palace ahead very early in the game. Bobby Tambling added to that to make it 2-0. And then just before half-time, this fellow, Dennis Law, pulls it back to make it 2-1. Still to come on the big match for you to enjoy the final six in the Golden Goals, plus highlights of Wolves against Southampton. But the half-time score here at Selhurst Park, Crystal Palace 2, Manchester United 1. And we'll be back with you in just a couple of minutes.
And now we just wonder if that uh, wonderful first half can be matched by something like it in the second half. United still that one goal down, 2-1 down, but showing enough flair in that last five minutes of the first half to suggest that they might still well be in this game. Jim Scott. To David Payne. Certainly when you consider that Crystal Palace have conceded something, I think it's 13 goals in their last six games, then their defence is anything but uh, watertight. Sadler. And Wall. A good bit of control there on his body and then found Kemba. Payne. And United, so off a United player, so it'll be Crystal Palace's throw. Now Bobby Charlton, the skipper, will need to uh, whip his men up just a little bit in this second half. Willie Morgan. Between two players and the referee has stopped it, which may have been a pity for United because they were in possession with uh, either Clarend or Gowling to go for it, but he gave the free kick and it's Bobby Charlton to take it. Law was saying he wants it in the air, so too does Gowling. And Law, in fact, with an overhead kick, and it's there! He didn't catch it properly, but it went in for all that. Completely deceiving John Jackson. Struck low by Charlton. Law tried the most extravagant of overhead kicks. He didn't catch it properly, but it went in all the same. And United are level. Hurley. And our best. Dowling. And the cross is a little too hard. It won't go out though, but Payne in fact has given away the corner. Crystal Palace, who for a long time in the first half seem to be walking away with this one, are under pressure really for the very first time in this game as Charlton takes the corner and Law tries one of those typical headers of his. But Hoadley went with him. Phil Hoadley, really fine young defender who sticks to a man closely and here's a more experienced one, John McCormick. Kemba. Scott. Wonderful open game this is now. Still Scott. And now for Bobby Tamlin with time enough to have a real good shot. But straight into the stomach of uh, Alex Stepney. If ever the stage now is set for George Best to do something, it's now with uh, United coming back from a very bad position indeed to 2-2 and the game so open and best prepared to contest even a throw-in a match with a lot of bite in it for all the fact that uh, neither of them are really desperate about uh, first division points free kick to Crystal Palace Terry Wharton to take it. Peter Wall's gone right up to reinforce that front line. Birchinall with his head to it, done to hoof it away. Gowling and Hoadley. And now Bess! Off in chase. Jackson doesn't know whether to come or stay. Still best. Still best. Still best. And a goal kick. And Manchester United doing exactly what Crystal Palace did so well in the first half with some brilliant breaks from defence. Wharton. And now Scott. Wharton again to Birchinall with Tambling on, sweeping on the outside of him now. Bobby Tambling again, but not enough power. Clarence. Burton will quicker to react to that than Edwards. 
but Fitzpatrick also quick to react. Law, Charlton, and on the far side, Crera. Look at that for a pass as well. What a superb pass by Charlton. Oh, not such a good one by Paddy Crera, but in fact, uh, Bobby Charlton made something of it. Law, lifting himself again. Gowling, Best, and there it is, George Best. 3-2, and Manchester United's comeback is complete. was not in down John Jackson had no chance because best was ready to pounce on it and put United into the lead so best the top scorer for Manchester United takes his tally now to 17 and gives Palace something really to fight for now Kemba trying to go it alone Well, we were saying at the start of the second half that it was Bobby Charlton's turn to whip his men up. And now it must be Steve Kemba's. And there you have the United fans with their cheerleader and all. Perrin beating Kemba and doing well, finding Bobby Charlton. And there's Law, free again. Law and kicked away by Hoagley. There's Phil Hoadley there, the Crystal Palace player, still a teenager, and they're convinced here that one day he'll play for England, and certainly his defence today has been superb. There's the corner. Fitzpatrick going in on it with his head, but he'll be wide. Kemba, Payne. And Best, once more, bursting on that scene, and played there nicely by Perrin for Best, to hammer on, and Jackson, and it's there! Oh, a mistake by John Jackson, and Best has scored again! Jackson is absolutely disgusted with himself, sitting at his goal. He makes so few mistakes in the course of a season, but that was a bad one, and United get their fourth goal. Jerry Queen is on, the substitute for Crystal Palace. And it looks as though it might be Terry Wharton who's going off. United fans probably can't even believe it themselves. 2-0 down, and now 4-2 up. And now Hoadley, a long one forward. There's Queen going in for his first touch, but in fact it was Edwards who got ahead to it first. Jerry Queen, second top scorer here, with ten. And there's Queen again, trying to lay it off, but uh, a little too far ahead of Bobby Tamling, and uh, Alice at the moment quite dispirited. Gowley. And McCormick finding Kemba. Nice little flick there to find Scott. On to Queen. With a good shot there by Queen, and it wouldn't rebound to a Palace player. Law. Finding Morgan. Good cross by Morgan. And Law very nearly got ahead to it. Perron following it in. And Wall through the legs of Morgan to Taylor. Tamley. Oh, and Perrin's beaten him. Played there for Law, and number five! Number five by Dennis Law. And that, of course, is Law's hat-trick. So a hat-trick by Law, and two by George Best. And that goal made for him by Pat Crerin. And still inscrutable, Matt Busby.
But I bet Sir Matt is puffing away with just a little bit more pleasure now. A really wonderful game and an exhilarating performance by Manchester United. Ferran. And Gowling. And away goes Gowling. Now is this going to be number six? Law is lurking once more. There's Law! And he couldn't quite get ahead to it. Virginal flicking it on. Jerry Queen is there too. Play not quite right there for Virginal. Didn't give him too much of a chance. Kemba. Driving it in there. Virginal going for it. And Stephanie so cool. McCormick to Tambley. Queen. Kemba. Taylor. And Kemba again, and Queen, the hammer it but wide. Virginal back to uh, Kemba, and they've got their substitute on now, United, Francis Burns. Law, Dowling. Oh, there's some wrestling going on there between Dowling and McCormick. And the free kick has been given to Manchester United, to uh, McCormick's obvious disgust and pain as well. And the substitute, there he is, Francis Burns. Best to take it. Pat Curran has gone off. Best. And Taylor. My goodness, he'll have to do something. He should have put that back to Jackson before then. Best turning it back again. And Wall there this time for Crystal Palace. Hoadley. And now Tamley. Virginal. And Scott. Going past Dunn, hard across there, that might well have gone in, but Tambling with a chance to turn it back. Scott has stayed off the field in order not to be offside, but Fitzpatrick. Law, Hoadley, seven goals already and uh, could well be getting some more yet. There's still a quarter of an hour to go. Kemba. Long shots being very capably fielded by uh, Alex Stepney. <laughs> Kemba. Scott. Tambling. Played on and Scott's going with it. My goodness, he very nearly connected and so too did Kemba. Best really bundled off that ball by Hoadley. Law to Best. Jerry Queen turning it off for Tampley. And now Kemba. Scott. Dunn should get to that one, he doesn't uh, quite know whether to turn it back to Stepney or not because Kemba was right at him. And so he did the safest thing.
Tambling. Queen. Oh, and that might still fall for Taylor, and it was hacked behind for a corner by Paul Edwards. Something like eight minutes to go, and Manchester United leading by five goals to two. Taylor with the corner. Wall flicking it in, and it's there by Queen. Jerry Queen, who got the final touch. Taylor's corner, and it was nodded on. And Queen, who bent low just to get the touch past Alex Stepney. So, eight goals now in this game that has been full of so much good entertainment. And another seven minutes left to see whether Palace can pull back two more. And now Taylor. Tambling. Scott is closely with him. Here's Scott. Stopped in the end by Willie Morgan. But Scott really fighting. And a wild kick there by Willie Morgan. And the fists are out. And the referee is holding back Morgan. And someone at last holding back Scott. But really that was a bad, a bad piece of play there by Morgan going in on Scott. He was the culprit. And Scott who retaliated. And the referee wants this word with Willie Morgan. Nobody's name taken, I would think that Willie Morgan must be a little lucky in that. That really was a wild kick by Morgan and he was really very fortunate indeed. Kemba. And Scott, what a good ball by Kemba. Scott limping badly now as Taylor takes it up for Crystal Palace. But not a good shot. So it's Burns, Law, Best. Past best. Ball bobbling, not very helpful to him. Wall, though, a good pass there by Wall to Taylor. Taylor with Fitzpatrick. Again, trying to go on the outside of him. And a free kick given to uh, Crystal Palace. Hard to see what that was for, but the referee was right with it. Tony Taylor with it. And even McCormick's gone up for this one. And Birchinall's there too. McCormick getting ahead to it. Got it on. Oh, and kicked away over his own head by Bobby Charlton. Well, how did Charlton get a foot to that? Now Kemba. Really is all happening in that penalty area now. Tambling. Belted away by Edwards, but only as far as Taylor. Now Wall. Everything now is centred in that penalty area. Oh, and picked over his own goal by uh, Edwards. Two minutes to go. Bobby Charlton there in the background, the real saviour for United there. And Taylor with the call up for the Palace. Now Kemba. Still Kemba. Played wide for Taylor with time to get it across. Low and hard. And Burchino! Oh, a magnificent save by Stepney. And now Best. He's got Law up with him, and look at that for a pass. Almost played without looking. And Morgan, though, stopped in his tracks by Payne. Tony Dunn to Willie Morgan. Now George Best. 
Still best, wonderful skills. Still he goes on. And then to everybody's surprise, finds Morgan on the touchline. And a corner. We've had half a minute of injury time. Time, of course, not uh, added on for corners, only for penalties. And Willie Morgan to take this corner in the dying seconds for Manchester United. Leading by five goals to three. And Hoadley to get it away. Done. Edwards and the final whistle on a wonderful game and a tremendous credit to Manchester United. Dennis Law, the hat-trick man, and George Bestidis, who scored two. They are the men who really, there's Best, they are the men who really put Palace to the sword. But a really marvellous and magnificent performance by Manchester United to come back when it looked as though they were out of it. And so the final score here, as the crowd comes roaring on to say farewell to Manchester United, at the end of a superb afternoon, the final score, Crystal Palace 3, Manchester United 5. So some really sparkling stuff there from Manchester United and more sparkling stuff still to come on the big match because we've got Wolves against Southampton, we've got Aberdeen against Celtic, the final six of the Golden Goals, a look at your letters and a fun spot too. But what about Manchester United yesterday? After the game at Selhurst Park I had a word with Dennis Law. First I asked him when he'd last scored a hat-trick. I think Brian, as I told you before, I think the five sides the last time I got a hat-trick. Oh, it's so long ago I can't really remember. And away from home as well. Yeah, we don't score many. Five goal wins away from home. We was there one goal that gave you a particular pleasure today? Uh, the first. That you was know, when Alan Gowling of... played so well, so cool, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, but apart from the goal, it uh, sort of brought us back into the game because we were 2-0 down and uh, it was only a few minutes ago. I had to look at the clock and this goal came about three minutes before half-time, which was nice to get back into the game then, of course. Mm. George Best, two goals. Well, of course, uh, he's a marvellous player, isn't he? You know? I think the, uh, the second goal was... Uh, it was a bit unfortunate for the goalkeeper because the ball was swerving like uh, anything and uh, he was a bit unlucky really, but it was a marvellous shot. Was it difficult out here in a fairly high wind or not? Well, I, sometimes it's better to play against the wind. You know, as we found in the first half, we had the wind with us and the ball tended to run away from us, you know. And in the second half, the ball held and we seemed to play much better as uh, you probably watched. Indeed, and I think even the avid Palace fans would say it was a wonderful exhibition of football. Would that be as well as United have played all season briefly? Oh yes, yes I think so, yes, and uh, I must say that the Palace fans are, were magnificent, you know. So, some kind words from Dennis Law for the Palace fans, and now with another view of that game, here's Jimmy Hill. Well, in fact, it was a bright and enterprising start from Crystal Palace, as has happened so often when I've seen them. But I have the feeling that if they don't kill off their opponents early on in the game, when they're really going at full power, then they have a tendency to slack off, lose the confidence of the crowd and lose their own confidence in their method. And, and you can't do that to a team of the calibre of Manchester United. But really, the moment for me yesterday was when Dennis Law completed his hat-trick. He was determined to get it once he got two goals. And it's lovely to see this Danny Kay of the football field, an electric entertainer, so determined uh, so full of maturity and so full of skill. Here he is now, scoring the first. In fact, that was Hoadley who let that ball slip under his foot. Dennis comes into it now with a delicately judged side foot pass to Gowling. Hoadley tries to recover but slips in doing so. There's a feint from Gowling. He now goes on, rolls it back of his left foot. But look at the speed with which Law comes in to get there first. His left foot, right in the middle of the goal. That is the majesty of law, the speed with which he can get in first in the penalty area. Sometimes in the middle of the field, he looks ordinary, but not when it's there. There's Bobby Charlton for the second one with the cross, and this is a marvellous overhead kick. Falling on his back, a scissors kick, and the spin of the ball as it comes off the floor completely deceived Jackson. Not an easy one to read that, I'm not quite sure Dennis knew where it was going to fly, but on that day, the net was the best place for it. Law with his hand in the air for number two. And here's the third one coming up, a bad pass back there from Tony Taylor. Bobby Tamlin tries to recover, but what I want you to watch here is how quickly Paddy Creeran sums up the position in the middle, gives the early ball, and gives Dennis the chance to whack it in with that right foot. Perfectly placed in that corner of the game. No possibility for the goalkeeper there. A lot of people saying Law was finished. If he's finished, well, I only wish that I had some of that ability left in me. And of course, it wasn't only Law's day. The other great entertainer in the Manchester United side, Georgie Best, wouldn't be outdone. He scored two beautiful goals. One, perhaps a slight mistake from uh, Jackson, but this was the second and the best of them. Creerand on the left wing, switching it over the middle. And we get a chance to see Bobby Charlton now. Another one 
of United's grand old men. There's a delicate flick to the left. When you allow this kind of player to play like this, there's the feint, you ask for trouble. And that's what happened in the second half. Dennis Law wins it again, and watch Gowling improving, I think, with every time I see him, with that header the best, and there's the skill from now on. Pulled down on the foot. Now, where would you put it there? Is there one place where it would go in the goal? But we're not under pressure. Best was under pressure, but he still holds out in exactly the right spot. George Best, smiling and laughing in his beard. But there we are. It would be a shame, perhaps, to carp about something that happened yesterday. It was a good game, entertaining game, full of goals and well refereed. But I can't help feeling there was one incident there which raises the question, you know, where is the consistency in refereeing? There's Scott on the left of the picture pushing Willie Morgan. In fact, that is a push. But have players the right to react to a push like that these days? And if they have, why is it that they don't get their name taken for that kind of offence when you can have your name taken for pulling a ball down in the air? I hope the new manager of Manchester United is going to do something about that. Jimmy Hill with his customary strong views on the game of football. Now, a little earlier we had that tribute from Dennis Law for all you Crystal Palace fans. Uh, and I always thought, in fact, that the Crystal Palace club was a good, honest and a very fair-minded club as well. But obviously yesterday they were very disappointed when they lost a match, so they thought they were going to win. But don't you agree that this might be going just a little too far? Well, that most certainly is one way of wiping out the opposition. But now let's have a look at some of your letters on the programme today. And first, something for all you Cardiff City fans. And uh, Mr P.L. Grigsby of Hornsby Lane in London, he's obviously an exiled Cardiff City fan, uh, says that it's not often that we have a chance to show his favourite Cardiff City side in action. Well, Mr Grigsby, uh, here are four excellent goals that Cardiff City scored when they went up to Roker Park earlier this season and beat Sunderland. Quickly. Now Bell... Warboy's going up towards the area, hoping for the cross from Reese. There's Clark. Chance for Clark. It's there. A well taken goal that by Brian Clark. Hit that well, Harris. And a beautiful shot. What a magnificent shot. Montgomery hardly even saw it. King number nine picking it up. Cardiff now starting to play a bit at half pace, hooked in by Parsons. King. In goes Clark. And a great shot, and what a great goal by Gibson. Well, I, well, I hope that uh, cheers up all our friends in the Harlech television area, particularly after that rather disappointing performance yesterday by Cardiff, beaten at home by Watford. But as Jimmy School of the Cardiff manager said, there's still a long way to go yet. And of course, Cardiff have that very important game yet to play uh, up at Sheffield United. Well, a few weeks ago, I jokingly referred to Jimmy Hill not being allowed into the recently opened Football Hall of Fame because, of course, he's still playing football. But Mr J Peterson of Southampton wrote to say, who's he playing for? Well, in fact, I did offer my services to Fulham in their promotion running, but I think very wisely they declined it. But I do play charity matches on lots of Sunday afternoons. In fact, as soon as this programme's over today, I'm going off to play for the late Sunny Waters at Walthamstow. Uh, a very worthy cause indeed. There'll be John Charles there, uh, Dave Mackay, quite a lot of outstanding personalities, Billy Wright. I'm looking forward to the game, and if any big match viewers would like to come along, we'd be glad to see you there. Before we go on, let me just uh, give you a word too about the Arsenal song that we had on the programme last week, Rule Britannia. Just to bring you right up to date, the Arsenal players, in fact, were recording that song this morning and we hope to play it for you on the big match next Sunday. But now it's time for Golden Goals of 1971. And it's your last chance today to enter for our 1971 competition, the final six. Uh, we're running it, of course, in conjunction with the Evening News and with the Evening Standard. And tomorrow they'll be printing for the last time the Golden Goals voting form. Now, if you live in the London area, you can only vote on these uh, voting forms from the Standard and the News. If you live outside their circulation area, then we will accept your entry on a postcard. And I'll give you the address for that in just a moment.
What you have to do, of course, is to put the final six in an order of merit, which is best, which is second best, which is third best, and so on. So here then, for the last time, are the final six. Goal A, first of all, scored by Johnny Hollins for Chelsea against Arsenal, away back in August at Stamford Bridge. Story. To Hinton. And now Harris. Hollins has gone off on another break and Nelson's gone with him. Hollins! Good work by Hollins! Oh, against the post! Can he do it? He can! John Hollins! Oh, what a beautiful goal! Hollins then for persistence. Goal B, Rodney Marsh of Queen's Park Rangers and this one came in an exhilarating performance against Birmingham. And hustled into an error and Ferguson is right there in the middle of it. Will it come through to Marsh? Oh, look at that for skill by Marsh! Trick. Marsh for magic. Goal C. That came from Alan Gowling for Manchester United. He scored that one against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. United for the moment under siege with everybody in their half, bar Bonnetti. Bar Bonetti. Webb with a kick. Smethurst looking for it. And my goodness, Stepney came out a long way to hunt, punch that one away. And away goes Gowling now. Harris is chasing him. He's done very well already, and he's still going on. Will he get a shot in? Oh, my goodness! And it's a goal, was it? Yes, it's a goal! A goal is given by the linesman, and that really was a goal in a million by Alan Dowling. Gowling for grit. And then we come to goal D, and that was scored by Martin Chivers, one of the two that he scored for Spurs in the League Cup final against the Villa. And John Dunn for the Villa. Hamilton to McMahon. Now they are stopping and looking, and Spurs are attacking a much quicker as Chivers now. Good control by Chivers. And he's done it again! Martin Chivers! Oh, what a goal by Chivers! Chivers then for courage. Goal E, Jimmy Robertson for Ipswich Town, and this one came against West Ham at Upton Park. Which, if anything, now beginning to get the upper hand. There's a good looking ball there from Morris to Robertson. He can take on McDowell. And a goal! What a great goal by Robertson! That really did put West Ham back on their heels. Robertson's rocket. Goal F by Ray Kennedy of the Arsenal. This came just a couple of weeks ago and it was scored against Chelsea. Hudson and McClintock. Charlie George again bursting in on the scene there and McCready going with him but he still found Radford and now George Grail. Armstrong coming in on it. Beautiful play there by Armstrong. Oh and a dummy there and there's Kennedy in! Oh a fine goal by Kennedy! And we call that one Kennedy's killer. Now what you've got to do is to put them in the right order. Here again are the final six. Goal A, John Hollins. Goal B, Rodney Marsh. Goal C, Alan Gowling. Goal D, Martin Chivers. Goal E, Jimmy Robertson, and goal F, Ray Kennedy. Now, you've got to put them in the right order, the order that agrees with the order that the panel are going to decide, the panel of uh, Victor Railton of the Evening News, Bernard Joy of the Evening Standard, their own Jimmy Hill, and our special guest, Gordon Banks. Uh, remember, the voting slips will appear in the news and the Standard tomorrow for the last time. If you're outside that circulation area, you've got to do it on a postcard. This is the address. Golden Goals, London Weekend Television, Wembley in Middlesex, and closing date is first post on Wednesday morning. And the winning viewer will be a guest of the big match uh, for a weekend in a fortnight's time and will come onto the programme and meet the stars at a special party afterwards. But now it's time for some more action from yesterday and it comes from the Midlands where we had two of the highly successful first division clubs, Wolves and Southampton in opposition. The pictures come from ATV, the commentator there was Hugh Johns and Southampton are the team in the striped shirts. Mike Bailey then with the corner. Magnificently, Martin rather fortunate to live again. Fisher. Chip for Channon. Gabriel in difficulties. Joe Kirkup helps him out. That's a ball for Parkin. Aiming for Gould and McGrath is there with him. Little Brian O'Neill for Southampton. Hollywood close to him.
the ball for Davis. O'Neill. One for Channon to chase and McCall going with him. Channon winning it too. What a fine goal by Mike Channon. But what a terrible blunder then by John McCall. My goodness, Mike Channon really let that one go. Something there obviously to please all you Southern television fans. And incidentally, Leeds United have got to come down to Southampton next Saturday for a crucial game. That can't be a very easy one for Leeds with the way the Saints are playing at the moment. Uh, incidentally, you may have seen that we advertised Liverpool v Spurs today. And here come the two goals from that game up at Aberdeen. To Celtic. Jimmy Johnston has come across to take the kick. Nicely fighting. What a chance! It's a goal! Harry Hood has scored a sensational start. Forrest left footed across goal. Williams comes out, doesn't gather it. McNeil completes the clearance. It comes down to Murray. Williams scrambling back onto his line. That ball comes through to Willoughby. A great chance for Willoughby. <laughs> 1 1 the score. Seven minutes from half time. An astonishing situation here. Aberdeen on the break. This is dangerous. Chance for Graham. Stopped on the line. The save of the season by Billy McNeil. So as a result of that, the Scottish Championship still very much in the melting pot. That's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. On the ball next Saturday lunchtime, the big match, of course, next Sunday afternoon. We leave you today not with a goal, but with perhaps a lighter side to that one ugly incident at Crystal Palace yesterday.